Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at perfectly divided full screen splits. I've had this on my list for quite a while and I'm glad I waited because I, I added a few interesting things. These are not individual split screens. I actually have a whole bunch of those uh, for sale, uh, 50 different ones and then 52 other ones uh, with like two screens, three screens, 54 screens, lots of screens. Anyway, you can get those uh, from the store at videoreveal.com. What I wanna show you is a full screen split. They're so easy to do and they're very visually striking. They kind of look like that video wall kind of thing. I'm also going to show you how to, to unsync them, stagger them, and a few other floating mask effects. So let's have a look uh, with the examples that I created. So it looks like one video, but it's actually four separate videos. This has transitions uh, or actual um, effects in it. And here's the one that's unsynced. This has got a really interesting look to it. Very interesting. One more example of that same style. What I'm gonna do with this one is I'll show you how to bring the sync back together. Okay, here's a revealing one that shows you a bit and then opens up to show you the whole scene. Another example where the real frame is different from what you're thinking. Another one with a mask this time. And this one is floating around, so Faces are floating around and then eventually they just kick into gear and start walking. So I'll show you how I made all of those. Okay, so to start off, let's go to this video, which is one solid frame. And if you want, you can just put a graphic on top of this. So it looks like a split screen. This is just if we go to the properties panel, these are just two shapes that I created. And when you're creating these, you can make these with rectangles as I did, he, did here. Um, rectangles are easy because you can change, you can change things like the width of them and the color very easily. If instead of using um, a rectangle, you use the pen tool, the pen tool is a little bit odd. Sometimes when you click, it actually has handles on it. Instead of one click should be a corner point and another should be a corner point. Sometimes you get handles. I tend to stay away from those uh, unless I really need them. Rectangles are fine, whatever. It's just two graphic elements that are on the screen that make it look kind of like a split screen. But what I think makes this look better in this example here is that it pops on. So it's obvious when you're looking at that, that it's not a full screen and it reveals more of this. To me, this is way more exciting if you're trying to create the split screen effect where you make the viewer guess what's coming up and you can show either uh, interesting stuff or confusing stuff. I'm gonna go, go right to this multi example and really give you an example of this. So here we have him at the top of the frame looking down in this one uh, box. And if I play this, you'll see more things start to appear. I really went crazy with the splits on this one. And boom, 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 boom. Each one is coming up. And if you look at this, all you're seeing is a bunch of staggered beginning. Every single one of these is a duplicate of the frame with a different crop value, and it starts at a different time. Let me show you. The, the other example here, and I'll just, I'm holding the Alt key on Windows, the option on Mac and dragging it up four times. So now I have four of this clip, but each one of them is a full screen. They're, they're not in their own quadrant yet. So I'm gonna go to the top one, go to properties. Crop is, is now part of, 
It's an intrinsic property in a clip. You don't have to add the crop effect. You can if you want, but it's so much easier to do this. There's also this new little guy down here where the crop, you can actually crop here. Instead of adding numbers, you can just drag this over. But essentially, it's, it's 50 and 50 on the right and the bottom. And this one, I'm going to say, is the top left, sorry, top right. So the left should be 50 and the bottom should be 50. To me, that's a bit more accurate. This one will be the bottom left, so the right should be 50, and the top should be 50. And this one is the bottom right, so the left should be 50, and the top should be 50. So now each one of these has its own quadrant. And all you're doing, we zoom in here, all you're doing is just taking the beginning and trimming. So now we start there, go to there, there, there. Pretty easy, right? Um, you can make this a little bit more interesting by starting to add either effects or transitions. Uh, in this particular one, I'm using the swivel, and the swivel doesn't look real. It, it's Swivel is not a real 3D effect. It's kind of a fake old effect, and you can see that. So I tend to not use that. I'll, I'll show you an example of, of what I use instead. Uh, I'm a big fan of a film impact. You've probably seen recently a film impact update, and I use that a lot. This looks much better. These look like real 3D blocks coming in, and they require no animation. They're just a film impact transition that you drop on. And, and this one uh, is called Flip, obviously. It's a 3D flip. Boop, 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 boop. So how do you get this weird look here? where his face is not lined up correctly. All you have to do, let's go back to the beginning one again. Is change, move this, and you can turn off these snap if you want. Just move these a little bit. And now you get this effect where it's not lined up correctly, depending on how far you want to move these around, depending on the, on the media too. I chose these because it was easy for you to see the subject in all four quadrants. Of course, if you've got something really busy, this might not even make sense. So that's how that works. And the same one with this guy here. This one is using film impact block motion. And what I like about here is that boom, 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 they overshoot. Mm, mm, mm. They kind of come down and jiggle. Of course, you can completely change that overshoot to bounce to Bezier. It's amazing. Okay, so that's how those are done. Now, this one I thought was what was interesting is I picked a clip where you can see a lot of what's going on in the middle area, but it, it's it's very odd how many people are shooting a super skinny wide video. Well, they're not, it's cropped. So this particular, sh the first thing I've got here is this shape, which is just a rectangle on its own. So if I turn that off, these just fade in with a dissolve. And what they have, we go to properties, they've got crops on them. And the crops just take it up to the area that frames their faces. And then I've got a blur to color, film impact blur to color, that just comes in and finishes that off. It's really easy, but I think it's very impactful when you see this, and then you reveal the full frame. Okay. Next up. What I thought was interesting here is um, right 
now it looks, I mean, if you look at their knees, obviously you can see they're not that close, but it looks like they're having a very close conversation. And for this, I cropped these, each one, and I put a little dissolve on this. And if we go to the effects controls, I change the position information and then move them to where they should be and then dissolve the bottom in. So the way you line these up is you don't start with them moved. You add the three um, clips and make sure that they're all lined up on the end. So by the time the playhead gets to a certain point, they're all lined up. And then when you chop them and you come earlier, this, this is the first keyframe that where the original is. You move earlier and then you just position these somewhere here and animate them. That way you're not trying to move them into the middle and then find where the end was. The end is the first one, the end uh, position. All right, the next one I thought was kind of interesting. Boop, where she pops in. And again, this is film impact uh, pop motion. She obviously does not have a, uh, uh, a crop on her. She has a mask. So I just drew a mask around her. And again, the, she's lined up with the background. And then I just turn the background on. I'm using a mosaic uh, film impact. And then I just turn it off. All right, now the last one if we turn off the bottom, again, this is four copies of the same clip. And at the end, they just dissolve into the original. So each one of these is the original clip. Each one has a mask. So I drew very simple primitives around each one. And I moved the position information, which was a little tricky. I didn't want any overlapping, so I wanted to make sure that that square didn't pop into the, the over top of any of the other ones. But what really sells this is that. Oh, you gotta love AI in Photoshop these days. All I did was export out a frame with all three of them in it, and I told Photoshop to take them out. It, it got it mostly right because it's missing a building in the background. But in the animation, by the time they come in, you don't see that they're missing. So you just export out a frame, click this, export out a frame, and then edit it in Photoshop, and then bring it back in. That's what this bottom frame is. So it starts with the background. And then you'll see when he moves, see the building in the back and the people? It didn't get it here, but I don't think you miss it. And then I've got a little film impact dissolve, whew, like that, where they come in place. All right, lots of fun. You can make it simple or complicated. Uh, there's also odd shapes, so you don't even have to, to uh, get into shapes like this as really different shapes with some film impact mosaics on there. So each one of these is a mask. So I just draw a mask on each one. There you go. One thing I did want to show you uh, in this example here, you might notice those black lines. See the black line and the black line where the mask is? See how when I stop, oh, I guess I didn't line that up perfectly. When I stop, it disappears. What's important to notice is that if I click on the wrench and go to high quality playback, if I play that, you won't see those lines. The reason high quality playback is not turned on all the time is it can really affect performance. Output is always high quality. It's just you might scratch your head sometime and see an artifact, especially with masking and you're wondering, or graphics, 
what is that darn thing? Why is it there and not when I stop? It's because high quality is not turned on. Don't worry, your export's gonna be fine. All right, last, let's look at the timing. So this is the, the, the guy who is out of sync and eventually he gets into sync. Boom, now he's into sync. So we're out of sync, a little out of sync, into sync. All right, so to do that, here's all four of the clips. They're just staggered. So their, their start time um, is just moved, not trimmed. If you trim, it's in sync. If you move, it's out of sync. So here's what I wanna do. Let me just show you the easy way to do this. If you go to the end of the clip, and if we choose the um, rate stretch tool, which is a timing tool, and you just click and drag these, it's going to make sure my snap is on. And now the timing is such that they're all in sync but they're only in sync at the end. So by the time he's in sync, it's over. I, whoops. I wanted to find a place here where they're all in sync. So I want it to be out of sync and in the middle, come in sync and then hold. That's a little trickier. For that, um, you can shut off the graphic or not, and then just start moving these in place. So I'm using the same rate stretch tool. I'm just moving these around, eyeballing it. And if I spend a little bit of extra time, I'd get them perfect. But that's the idea is here, they become in line. Oops. <laughs> Anyway, it, it takes a little a bit of work, but that's the example right there. They pop in, and they sync up, and then everything is removed. You don't have to get that complicated. You, you can just do that simple overlay, maybe some uh, transitions. Film impact is always so much fun. If you go and look at my, uh, my split screens, I hand animated the position of every single one of those, up to 54 clips on, on one uh, screen. And it, was, it took me weeks of work. I wish I had Film Impact back then because I just drop on all these little uh, transitions and it changes and I can update it and I can change whether it overshoots or bounces or bezier. Anyway, so there you go. There's some full screen splits that I think that you can do very easily and uh, you can get as complicated or as simple as you want. Hey, if you found this informative, uh, maybe take a moment and subscribe. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get all jazzed up about something that I think can look interesting and show you how to do it for yourself. <laughs>